First, let's understand vacuum. Assume that we delete a few records from a table. Postgres does not immediately remove the deleted rows from the database. These are just marked as deleted. Similarly, when a tuple is updated, it's equivalent to a delete plus one insert. The previous version of the record continues to be in the data files. Each update of a row generates a new version of that row. Postgres introduced version of a row because of the active transactions, which requires to see data as it was before. As a result of this activity, there will be a lot of unusable space in the data files. After some time, these dead records become irrelevant as there are no more transactions still around to see the old data. However, because the space is not marked as reusable, inserts and updates happen in new pages of the database. The vacuum process marks space as being available for reuse when it finds deleted or updated records within the table. There is a vacuum command to do this manually. Vacuum doesn't lock the table. In contrast, vacuum full, in addition to marking the space as reusable, removes the deleted or updated records and reorders data inside the table. However, this requires an exclusive lock on the table. There are two major downsides to doing that. The first one is that it's very time and resource intensive. Vacuum full, it's likely to take a very long time if your table is big and during that time it will have an exclusive lock on the table. That's a very bad combination. The second issue is index bloat, covered in more detail in the next section. If you found this video helpful, you could check the whole course on Udemy using the link in the description. By using that link, you'll get a 60% discount. I hope you'll get on board to find more tips like this to optimize your PostgreSQL like a pro. After the introduction, it's time to see vacuum in action. Usually, people are surprised to find out that there is no reduction in disk space from using vacuum. Vacuum will not shrink your table and disk space is usually not returned to the file system. We will create a table with 100,000 rows and with customized auto vacuum settings. Create table, vacuum test, with a column ID of type int, and with auto vacuum disabled. Note that it's possible to turn the auto vacuum off for specific tables. Usually this is not a good idea for most applications. However, for testing purposes, vacuum is turned off in this example to ensure that nothing happens in the background. Now let's insert into vacuum test 100,000 rows. So now let's check the size of the table by using the following command. The pg relation size command returns the size of the table in bytes and the command pg size pretty will take this number and turn it into something human readable. Now Let's update all rows using a simple update statement. Update vacuum test. And we set id equals id plus one. What happens in the background is crucial in order to understand PostgreSQL. The update operation will copy all rows. The question is, why would the database engine copy all the rows? First, we don't know whether the transaction will be successful or not, and therefore, the data cannot be overwritten. Second, concurrent transaction might still want to see the old version of the data. Okay, so now, let's see if the size of the table will be larger after the changes have been done. As you can see, the table doubled in size. After update, people might try to return space to the file system using the vacuum command vacuum vacuum test As stated before, vacuum doesn't return space to the file system. Instead, it allows space to be reused. Therefore, 
the table doesn't shrink at all. As a result, the next update will not make the table grow even further, because it will use the free space inside the table. Technically speaking, space left behind from deletion or updates of data is placed into a free space map by vacuum. At this point, new allocations are done from the free space first, rather than allocating new disk. However, a second update might make the table grow again because all the free space is gone and additional storage is needed. The impact of this observation is really important to remember after watching this. Understanding storage is key to performance and administration. There is no performance tuning without really understanding storage. In many situations where vacuum needs to happen, such as index bloat and excessive dead tuples, the work involved can be so intensive that you decide that vacuum needs to be avoided. This is actually the opposite of what should be concluded. In reality, the answer to most vacuum related problem is to vacuum more often. This reduces the amount of work done by each individual vacuum and it keeps the table sizes from getting so big in the first place. Table bloat is one of the most common issues when dealing with PostgreSQL. When we are facing bad performance, it's always a good idea to find out which are the objects which occupy a lot more space than they are supposed to. How can we tell if table bloat is happening? We should check the pgstats user table views. The live tuples and the tuples gives us an impression of what is going on. And what can we do if there is table bloat? The first option is to run vacuum full, but as discussed before, vacuum full needs a table lock. On a large table, this can be a real problem because users cannot write to the table while this process is running. This is why it's important to have auto vacuum well set to run periodically. Before looking at the actual configuration parameters, let's briefly discuss what are the high level tuning goals, what we want to achieve when changing these parameters. Clean up dead tuples, basically keep the amount of disk space fairly low, not to waste unreasonable amount of disk space, prevent index bloat and keep the query fast. Minimize cleanup impact. Don't perform cleanup too often as it would waste resources, CPU, IO and RAM and might significantly hurt performance. That is, you need to find the right balance. Running it too often may be just as bad as not running it often enough. The balance heavily depends on the amount of data you manage, the type of workload that you are dealing with, such as the number of deletes or updates. Most default values in PostgreSQL configuration file are quite conservative for two reasons. Firstly, the default values were decided a few years ago based on the resources common at that time. Secondly, we want the default configuration to work everywhere, including tiny machines like Raspberry Pi or small shared servers. As the database size and or amount of writes increase, problem starts to appear. The typical issue is that the cleanup doesn't happen often enough and then when it happens, it significantly disrupts performance because it has to deal with a lot of garbage. In those cases, you should follow a simple rule, that is, tune the parameters so that the cleanup happens more often and processes smaller amounts of dead tuples every time. Auto vacuum takes care of cleanup works in the background. It wakes up once per minute as specified by auto vacuum nap time in PostgreSQL configuration file and checks whether there is work to do. If there is work, auto vacuum will fork up to three processes as specified by auto vacuum max workers. Auto vacuum triggers the creation of worker processes based on some parameters found in PostgreSQL configuration file. The auto vacuum scale factor parameter tells Postgres that a table is worth vacuuming if 20% of the data has been changed. The problem is that if a table consists of only one row, one change is already 100%. It makes no sense to fork up a process to clean up just one row. Therefore, auto vacuum threshold says that we need 
20% and this 20% must be at least 50 rows, otherwise vacuum won't start. The same idea applies when it comes to statistics creation. We need 10% and at least 50 row to justify new stats for the optimizer. The idea is that AutoVacuum should create new statistics during a normal run to avoid unnecessary trips to the table. Vacuum will reclaim free space as needed. However, the main question is when can Vacuum actually clean out rows and turn them into free space? The rule is this, a row can be reclaimed if it cannot be seen anymore by any transaction. This means that if a row is no longer seen even by the oldest transaction, it can be considered really dead. Certainly, long transactions can postpone cleanup for quite some time. The consequences of this could be table bloat. Tables will grow very large and performance will tend to decrease. Fortunately, starting with Postgres 9.6, the database has a nice feature called Old Snapshot Threshold that allows the administrator to limit the duration of the transactions. To limit the lifetime of snapshot, you can make use of Old Snapshot Threshold setting in PostgreSQL configuration file. Minus 1 is disabled, 0 is immediate, or you can set it from 1 minute up to 60 days.